The RMSE is the Root Mean Standard Error, and it's also known as the Standard Deviation of the Residuals. And in general, the RMSE represents the amount of error being produced from an equation that's predicting a scatter plot. So you have a scatter plot and an equation, a line runs through the scatter plot. Is that line doing a good job and getting close to the true values or is that line off? And so the RMSE tells us that. And right in this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the RMSE for a linear model, a quadratic model, an exponential model of the form um, a times e to the kx, and an exponential model of a times b to the x. So let's jump right into it with the linear model. What I have right here in blue is a simple xy um, table data set. And when you calculate the RMSE, the main thing that you're first producing is an equation. So over here, we'll produce the linear equation. And to produce a linear equation, we of course need a slope and a starting value. Now, when producing a linear equation that models a scatter plot, which is called a regression, to produce this regression, this equation, we need to know the mean and the standard deviation of the x values and the y values. So I've already calculated here, but let's pretend I haven't already done that. How do you do it? Well, Google Sheets can easily calculate the mean of these x values. This command is average, and it's funny how it knows what we already want to do. So you type average, and then you select um, E2 colon E9, and I selected those cells because that's what we want to find the mean of. And the colon is in the center. E2 colon E9. There's the mean. And I believe if I paste it, copy that, and paste it right here, that's the mean. And let's check. Yep, average. That's the mean of the Y values. Average F2 to F9. So that's the mean of those values, and we're going to use that in one moment to calculate the slope and the starting value. Next, we're going to calculate the standard deviation for the x values and the y values. Google fortunately has a handed formula built in, standard deviation. They have different standard deviations. We use standard deviation.s, which stands for sample, but just know to use this one here. So standard deviation, we're going to do the same thing, e2 to e9. And then we can copy that, paste it here, and there's the standard deviation of the y values. Now these values of the means and the standard deviations will allow us to calculate the slope. So the rule for the slope is that the slope of a linear regression is the correlation times the standard deviation of the y values divided by the standard deviation of the x values. So it's the correlation, and I've already calculated the correlation right here. A kind of cooking show where they make something first. This is Oops, let's see. There it is, cor Corel, and you see I put F2, F9, comma, E2, E9, and that's the correlation of these two variables. It's 0.94. So we, when you calculate the slope, like I said a moment ago, it's the correlation times the standard deviation of Y divided by the standard deviation of X. So it's the correlation. The correlation is right now in cell E13 times, what do we want? The standard deviation of the Y, that's F11 divided by the standard deviation for the y, which is e11. There is the slope of our linear equation that best runs through this scatter plot. Now, what's the starting value? The starting value, and I should do a lengthy discussion of this, but I'll just tell you, it's the easiest way to find it is to say it's the mean of the y value minus the slope times the mean of the x value. And so it's the mean of the y value, which is F10, minus the slope, which we just calculated in A12, times, and it's the slope, times the mean of the x value, which is E10. All right, there we go. There's the starting value. Now, of all these different regression models, the linear is... Um, most built into Google and it actually can be calculated for you. So let's use that function, that tool, to double check our work. And the command to um, calculate that, and somehow they know I want to use this. I think it was because already here and I just had deleted it for this video. 
but linest, linest calculates the slope and then the starting value for you. And so you want the linest, and the key when you're using linest is to put the y values first. So f2, f9, comma, e2, e9. And notice that I put the y values f2, f9. Those are the y values first. Ah, and that's a good feeling because here is our linest, and notice it does the same as our um, work by quote hand where we're calculating the slope and starting value using our knowledge of linear equations. Here we're just asking Google to do it. Good, so they're the same. Great, now we have our slope and starting value. That is essentially what we need for our equation. With our equation we can then produce the predictions, then the residuals, and then the residual squared, the sum of the residual squared, and then finally the RMSE. And then we can compare the RMSE of our four equations. So let's keep going. How do you create a prediction for a linear equation? Well, what we really want to do is take this x value and plug it in to y equals the slope plus the starting value. So I'm going to do it right here. We're going to say we're going to create a prediction for our first x value. Our first x value is 2. So we're going to say we're plugging it in to essentially y equals mx plus b. So um, we'll say that's m is the slope, which we see in A12, times the x value, which is in E2, plus the starting value. Where does the starting value appear? In B12. And there is what we would predict. This is what our linear equation is predicting as a y value. So our true y value is 3, but our prediction is 2.2. And it's predicting that based on this equation. Here's our, our m, our slope, and our starting value. Now, in statistics, you commonly don't see it or hear it called as mx plus b. You, you hear it more actually as um, a plus bx, where a is the starting value and then b is the slope. So I'll do it that way just, to, just so that it completely lines up with how you'd see it. So a is the starting value, so we'd see b12 plus our slope, which is a12 times e2. So that's how I showed it in class, and that's how you'd probably see it in statistics classes, not that it matters. Now, there's our prediction for our first x value. We want to predict for all these x values. The easiest way is to copy and paste this formula down here. So we go copy, and we go paste. Now, here's a bunch of zeros. That tells us we did something wrong. And notice what's actually happening is that it's trying to pull these values here. right? It's, tr it's moving along with x but it's also moving around along with these ones over here. And we don't want to move the slope and the starting value. We want it to stay locked onto this. So the trick in sheets is to use a dollar sign to lock onto things you want it to lock onto. So we want to lock onto the B12 to put a dollar sign on the B and a dollar sign on the 12. And here on the A also, because that's our slope and starting value. So it shouldn't change that first one. That's still 2.2. Now let's delete these. Not that that's necessary. We could just copy and paste over it, but here we go. Copy this, paste here. Nice. And now we have a bunch of predictions. Notice 8.6, close to 10. 6.09, close to 5.8. So our predictions are all close to our y values. That's what we'd expect. That's kind of a way to indicate you're on the right track. So there's our predictions. Let's make this bold for looks. Now the residual and then the residual squared, which allow us to calculate the RMSE. So the residual is super simple. It's the difference between your actual y value and your prediction. I always have a hard time remembering whether it's prediction first or y value first when you're subtracting. So my hint is think it's actual, actual such as A. A comes first in the alphabet. So it's actual minus prediction. The A, the actual comes first. So what do we want? We want the actual value. What's the actual value? It's in Y3. Minus the prediction is in G3. Whoops, I meant to put, excuse me, Y2 and Y th and G2. And there is our, wait, what am I doing wrong? Y2, haha, that's funny. I meant to say F2, of course, F2. And there you see it highlights it, that's what we want. And there's our residual. Now let's copy and paste this, put it here, and there's all our residuals. Notice these residuals are negative. Why? Because the actual value is lower than these predicted values. When this residual is positive, that's because our actual value is higher than our predicted value. So here's our residual. 
All these residuals are just taking the actual value minus the predicted. Actual minus predicted. Now, the, the formula for the RMSE calls for this residual squared. So we just want to square each of these values of the residuals. So we can simply type equals h2 to the second power, and that's squared. And we want to do that same to all these. So if I paste this, it's very nice how it knows to take these h3 squared, h4 squared, and so on. And then here's all our residuals squared. Now, the RMSE is the square root of the sum of the residuals divided by two fewer than the number of um, data points. So let's find the sum of our residuals. That would just be as simple as sum this column, which is I2, I2 to I9. There you go. Enter, and there's the sum of our residuals. Now the RMSE is the square root of this sum divided by n minus 2. So we're going to say equals square root. That's how you can do that in Google Sheets to get a square root. And then what you put in here, if you just type 25, you know, hey, what? Well, I hope you know what's going to happen. 5, right? Here, though, we don't want to do that. We want to calculate the square root of our sum of residual squared divided by n minus 2. So we're going to say i12, which is that box right there, divided by n minus 2. There's 8 data points. So we want to divide by 6 because 8 minus 2 is 6. And there's our RMSE, 0.856. And that's the amount of error um, from our predictions. It's basically telling us how close our predictions are to our y values. Now this number doesn't really mean a lot, but if we had other models that were trying to predict this data set, like a quadratic model, then we could say, oh, the quadratic does it better and has a smaller RMSE because the predictions are closer to the actual Y values. So let's now calculate the quadratic um, RMSE. First though, we want to create the, um, we want to create a nice scatter plot so that we can actually see this data. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go insert, chart, and this chart is already set on scatterplot. Um, what's happening? I think this is a mistake. Oh yes, I'm going to click delete that and we want to select these and then now once we say insert chart it knows to uh, use those values. Now it gives us this um, bar chart or something. What we want is a scatter plot. So to fix that, what we do is we go over here and we go to setup and at the top it says chart type. And we want to select scatter chart and that's down here, scatter chart. Now one more thing you want to do is you see how it's producing you know sort of the x and y values separately. We want to use the x values as the x axis. And so here the key there is it's strange. It's, check this box. Use column E as labels. And now it's just produced a nice scatter plot where our x values are our x values and our y values are our y values plotted. Now there's the scatter plot, but what we also want to do is include the equation, and that's always nice. So to include the equation, you go to customize, go to series, go to trend line, and there's the line. And we want a linear trend line this time. You can change the color, who cares? And then you want to put the label so that we are going to use the equation. And it's actually calculating the equation um, itself. It's not actually using your equation. So there we go. There's the equation. It's up here. And now I'm just going to resize this so that it fits nice and looks, looks good. All right. There we go. And notice this equation is the same as our slope and starting value here. That's a good feeling. So we actually calculated our linear equation in three ways. Using our knowledge of linear equations with correlation and standard deviations. This is the big way. Very important to understand that. We use the built-in Google Linus. And also kind of the same thing, but here is the um, the equation coming out instead of Linus, it's coming out in the chart, in the scatter chart. All right, so there we go. There's the RMSE, 
that's what we're looking for at the end. There's the RMSE of the linear model. Let's do it for the quadratic model.